Let's talk about pulmonary arterial venous malformations, AVMs. Working in the pediatric cardiac ICU, you are likely to hear about aorta pulmonary collaterals, APCs. That's more common, but a totally different thing. I've got a different video about that linked at the top. Before we talk about AVMs, let's talk about normal. With normal pulmonary vasculature, the oxygenated blood from the pulmonary artery picks up oxygen from the alveoli while passing through the lung's capillary bed, then travels back to the left atrium via the pulmonary veins. With healthy lungs, blood in the pulmonary veins should be close to 100% saturated. In children with pulmonary AVMs, the capillary bed is skipped. The blood doesn't pick up oxygen, and it returns to the heart still desaturated. How blue the blood is depends on the extent of the malformations. This is a cardiac catheterization in a child with Glenn circulation and no pulmonary AVMs. Contrast is ejected into the pulmonary artery, where it is distributed to the lung bed. It can then be seen returning to the heart through the pulmonary veins. Now count the heartbeats between the time the contrast is shot into the pulmonary artery and when it enters the heart. One, two, three. With normal anatomy, we expect two to three beats between the pulmonary artery and the left atrium as the blood slows as it passes through the tiny vessels of the capillary bed. Now compare this to an injection in a patient with pulmonary AVMs. Inject one, and now the contrast is in the veins. The transit time through the lungs is almost instantaneous, no slowing at all. This, along with the lower saturation in the pulmonary veins, means the patient likely has AVMs. While I'm told the majority of pulmonary AVMs are in people with hereditary hemorrhagic telectasia, I take care of children with congenital heart disease. These children are generally not born with pulmonary AVMs, but they form later in life. Specifically, they form after the Glenn operation in children undergoing single ventricle palliation. But here's the weird thing. They go away after the child has the Fontan surgery. So what does that tell us? We actually don't know exactly what causes pulmonary AVMs to form, but we do know that they can also form in patients with liver disease. And given the flow of blood to the lungs after the Glen compared to after the Fontan, we think that it is the lack of something that allows AVMs to form. Let's walk through the anatomy. During the Glen procedure, the superior vena cava is attached to the pulmonary arteries. In most cases, the only blood going to the lungs is from the upper body, with a small contribution from the bronchial arteries. The blood from the inferior vena cava, which contains blood from the liver, goes out to the body. This is the time AVMs form. With the Fontan, the IVC is attached to the PAs, so blood from the liver goes directly to the lungs. The AVMs go away. This has led to the theory that there is some hepatic factor that suppresses the development of AVMs in the lungs. At the time of this video, we still don't know what hepatic factor is, but researchers are working on it, and I presume we'll eventually figure it out. So why does this matter if they will just go away on their own? For us in the cardiac ICU, this actually matters a lot. Patients with Glenn physiology have arterial oxygen saturations in the 70s or 80s. When the Fontan is done, almost all the blue blood is now routed to the lungs, with the exception of the coronary sinus, which still drains to the right atrium. The patient is nearly normally saturated, but not when they have pulmonary AVMs because some of the blood is returning to the heart still deoxygenated. So if you're taking care of a postoperative Fontan, you have to know whether they have AVMs so you can set appropriate expectations for their post-op sats. Despite the Fontan routing almost all the blood to the lungs, they will still saturate in the 70s with AVMs. Fortunately, all patients undergo a cardiac catheterization before the Fontan surgery, so you will know this information before they show up in your ICU. The good news is their saturations will get better in time, but not before they discharge.